In this exercise, we're going to be creating a menu layout and we're going to use something in InDesign called paragraph styles. So paragraph styles are really important and I'll show you how powerful they are, but I can't stress enough how important they are. So make sure that you understand paragraph styles and it's something that you use regularly when you work in InDesign because it'll allow you to be more precise and also just work more efficiently. Okay, so before you start your menu, it's good to take a look at some of the inspiration pieces at underconsideration.com slash art of the menu. This is a website that is dedicated to just great menu layouts. And a lot of these are really complex. They have a system with a folder with various sheets. In this case, we're gonna create something really simple and basic. Okay, so just know that we're mostly working with typesetting here and in later classes, you'll have the chance to create more robust menu systems. This is also a great place to grab some content for your menu because you don't wanna to have to write your whole menu. We're really just practicing layout. So if you wanna write all the items for your menu, you can, but I would recommend finding a source to copy that information from. So for instance, if I click on this first project, you can see a bunch of you know really cool inspiration or how this is laid out. But if I click on this to view the actual website for that restaurant, okay, then I can scroll down and it actually has the menu. And this is, you know, text that I can copy and paste. This is really what you want to look for because some restaurants will have this in more of an image format and it won't allow you to copy and paste. So if you can find one that is copy and pasteable, it's going to make your life much easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into InDesign and create a new document. And you can work with any size that you want, totally up to you for this. So I'm gonna click the print preset and let's go to inches. And I think I'll work with a nine by nine um, format. So a square format, but again, you can go wide landscape format if you want, you can go tall and skinny, that is totally up to you. Let's uncheck facing pages. And I'm gonna put in three columns because I think that that's gonna be a useful grid for what I'm doing. I'm going to increase the column gutter just a bit. Let's actually increase that to half an inch. And then I'm going to leave the margins at half an inch. There we go. So that looks good. Click create. All right. So here I am in my document and I went ahead and pulled the content from that menu into a word document. Okay. So I just grabbed three of the sections, which is what I want you to work with in this case. So three different sections. You can see I have small plates, salads, and then specialties. And then, you know, you want at least 10 different total menu items. And I have, you know, way more than that. So I'm good to go. So let me just go ahead and copy this. I'm going to hit command A to um, select all and then command C to copy it. And then let's go into InDesign and create a text box. There we go. And I can go into character styles and just sort of scale this how I want. And then hit paste to paste all that in. Okay, so now I have all of my text in here. And you can see that there's this little red sort of icon in the corner that has a little plus in it. Basically, that what, that, what that's telling me is that there's more content in this box than what can fit. Okay, so when you have that, it means that there is more text that's sort of hidden. So if I expand this down, you can see that that text is still there. But when I undo the resize of that, it's actually getting cut off. So that's sort of a warning that tells you that you have some text that's not quite showing. Okay, so that's fine. For now, we're, we're going to leave that, but just be aware that you might have some text that's cut off. And when you export your document, it's going to give you a warning about that overset text. All right, so let's go ahead and um, add some columns to this because I actually want to work with three columns here because I think that's going to be a good way to work. So let's go ahead and turn this up to three. And this is how you work with columns. Um, this is the number of columns. And then down here is the gutter. So if I change the gutter to be the same as our document, which is half an inch, you can see that now this is actually working on columns. Okay, so there we go. And really what I want to talk about here is um, what's called paragraph styles. And man, paragraph styles are so powerful and it's really one of the things that makes InDesign special. There actually are paragraph styles in the other Adobe programs as well, but InDesign is where you're gonna work with them most often and it's a way to keep everything super consistent and just dialed in um, when you work with big documents. So as much as paragraph styles seem handy now, 
they are even more handy when you're creating something like a book that has hundreds of pages. Um, it's absolutely mandatory to be setting up your document in the right way so that you're not running into issues later down the road. All right, so let's go ahead and start styling our text. And you can see we have a subhead for the um, actual um, category for the different menus. Then we have the menu item itself, which is the black and white hummus, and then the price. Okay, and then we also have sort of a description, which in this case is the pickled vegetables. Um, and then we have the next menu item, which is crispy Brussels sprouts. That's $8, and that comes with honey balsamic, toasted hazelnuts, and gruyere. So we sort of have a system here with this larger subhead for the category, the menu item, the price, and then the description or the things that it sort of comes with. So those are all going to be different um, styles that will create a really strong hierarchy. We're going to use paragraph styles to keep those all consistent. So let's go ahead and first um, change all of our text because right now it's all in Minion. Okay, so I'm actually just going to change this to Gotham. We'll change it to Gotham Bold just to kind of um, get everything closer to where we want it. Then let's go ahead and highlight our small plates and we'll make this larger because this is going to be a um, category heading. Okay, so that will be a bit bigger in our hierarchy. We can adjust this and you can make it whatever style you want. Um, for this particular exercise, it's mostly about getting the paragraph style set up in the right way. And um, we will continue forward with, you know, styling this menu next week. All right, so that looks pretty good. And so now we're kind of ready to create our first paragraph style. Okay, so this is a style that we want to keep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and put my cursor anywhere inside of this area. Okay, and when I talk about a paragraph style, we're actually styling an entire paragraph at once. And paragraphs are denoted by um, hard returns. Okay, so this is actually a separate paragraph from this because it's separated by a return. Okay, so if I just put my cursor anywhere in that area, I can go over to paragraph styles in the panel and go ahead and create a new paragraph style by clicking on this little button. Okay, so when I do that, I'm gonna get this thing that comes down that says paragraph style one. Let's go ahead and double click on that and that's going to allow us to rename that inside of this paragraph style options dialog box. So let's call that um, category, category. All right, um, and let's go to basic and you can see under basic character formats, um, this is already set up to exactly how we've styled that particular heading. Okay, so it's size 24, it's Gotham Bold. That's because since we had our cursor inside of that paragraph style, it inherited all of the styles from that particular style. Okay, so all this looks good. Let's click OK. Okay, so now we have a paragraph style here called category. And basically what this is, is it's a set of rules for how... Um, typography is styled. So if we assign this set of rules to any particular paragraph in our document, it's going to inherit all of those styles. So for instance, if I put my cursor down here with salads, this is another one of those category headings. Okay, so if I put my um, cursor there and I actually just select category in the paragraph styles, okay, you can see it changes to have all the same styling characteristics as the small plates. Okay, let's do the same with specialties. So again, I'm just going to put my cursor inside of that and go to um, paragraph styles and assign the category subhead. Okay, so now all those have that same um, paragraph style. And the really powerful thing about this is now that they're assigned to that paragraph style, okay, let me go ahead and click out of this box. I can always go and edit this paragraph style. So if I double click on it, I can go inside. And, you know, there's a ton of different options for how character styles work, but in basic character formats, I can go in here and I can change the size of this or the tracking or whatever I want to do. And it's going to populate that throughout the entire document. And again, if that's not actually doing anything for you, it might be because you have preview unchecked. So make sure you check that and then you can go ahead and um, see the changes as you are changing them. Okay, so we can do things like make it all caps, we can increase the tracking, we can lower the size, and you can see how having your document set up with all paragraph styles is going to be much more efficient. Because let's say you make a book that is, you know, 50 pages long, and your editor comes back and says, hey, I want to make all the headings a little bit smaller. 
Well, if you didn't work with paragraph styles, you're going to have to go through that entire book and manually change all of those headings. Whereas if you did use paragraph styles, you can just go in here and just really quickly change a few numbers and it's going to update that throughout your entire document. So this is the, really the best way to work and it's essential to being efficient in InDesign. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK to uh, apply those changes. If I click Cancel, it's going to um, not make any of those changes that I just made in here. So let's click OK. OK, and then let's go ahead and create a new paragraph style because we have other lo levels of hierarchy in here. For instance, the menu items, the prices, and the descriptions. So we want to actually have character styles for all of those. OK, so let's go ahead and put our cursor into this menu item. And we can go ahead and click to create a new style. Then let's double click on that to name this menu item. Okay, and then once again, I can make this whatever style I want in this paragraph style options. Okay, so by default, it inherited this style that I had, which was Gotham Bold 10 points. Let's say I wanna change this to Gotham Book. Okay, and let's go to all caps. We'll increase the tracking a bit and we'll bring the size down a little bit as well. Okay, and we can change the letting, um, whatever you want to do. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, and we are, we are going to um, style these further. So for now, I, I mostly want you to just get the paragraph styles right. And the next week, we're going to work on some more advanced options in paragraph styles to take this even further. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK for that. And you can see it only edited that one paragraph because we haven't assigned that to any other items yet. Okay, so let me go ahead and put my cursor under crispy Brussels sprouts, and I'll make that a menu item. Okay, for these dumplings, make that a menu item, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and make all of those items the menu items. Okay, and some of these items kind of look really similar to the um, descriptions, but it's always the one right before the price in my case. So just make sure that you're staying in the right system. And I could like select all this and make that the menu item, but it's actually good enough to just put my cursor on um, the one, you know, anywhere in that paragraph. Because again, paragraph styles actually apply to the entire paragraph. Okay, so I'm making all these menu items. There we go. All right. So this needs a lot of cleaning up. Um, we, we still need a menu, or sorry, a paragraph style for our price and then also our descriptions. So let's work on the descriptions next. So I'm gonna just put my cursor inside of any of these descriptions and then click on new. Let's rename this description. Okay, and this we can make a little bit smaller. Um, maybe we'll actually change the font of this. Let's go to Chronicle. Okay, we'll make this much smaller. Okay, we'll increase the letting a little bit. All right, that looks good. And then once again, I'm gonna go ahead and change all my descriptions to this um, style. You can see it was kind of greeking some of the type there for a second, but once again, that's not an issue. Um, the type is still as it was, it's just something it does to make things run a little bit faster. All right, there we go. So now all the descriptions share a style. And the last thing we need to do is make all the prices share a style. So let's go ahead and put our cursor with one of the prices and we can create a paragraph style for the price. Okay, and this one, let's just make kind of a medium size. We'll keep it bold. Okay, that's good enough. There we go. Okay, so let's just assign price to all the actual prices. So now we have this um, pretty dialed in. Obviously it's not styled completely right and we have to work on the spacing. Okay, so one thing that people do 
uh, really often in InDesign when they're new is they use a lot of line returns. And you can see there's some extra line returns kind of built into this document. Like there's a line return between small plates and the first menu item. You actually don't want to use those line returns. So let's go ahead and take out all those extra line returns. Even though it's causing some issues, everything's sort of butt up next to each other. Okay, it's actually the right way to work um, to instead of using line returns, use spacing within the paragraph styles itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to category and just make sure you don't have the actual box selected because if I have the box selected and then I click on category, okay, you're going to see that it's actually going to change everything in the box and assign the category paragraph style to it. Okay, so that's not what I want to do. So if I want to just edit category on its own, I want to make sure I don't have anything selected so I'm not assigning that to anything. Okay, so let's go into category and then under indents and spacing, this is the magic area where we can create um, the spacing that we want. Okay, so let's say that we wanted a little bit more space under small plates. Instead of putting an extra line return there, which is not a very accurate way to do it, we can use something called space after. Okay, so this is going to insert some margin after the style that we have for the category. Okay, so when I increase this and make sure you have preview on, you can see that's putting space after all of those category um, subheads. Okay, so let's say I want to put a little bit of space there. That looks good. Then let's do the same for our other um, items as well. Okay, so maybe I want to put some space after the descriptions because I really want um, those different menu items to really chunk together. Okay, so let's go to description and then I'll put space after, after those. Okay, so now you can see that there's um, much more chunking of the actual menu items together, which is helping to make this more readable. Okay, and um, you, you can do that for all the other items as well. So let's say that you wanted, um, you know, more space after the menu item, you can go to menu item, and you can put more space after. Okay, and you can see that that's increasing this margin in all of those different instances. In this case, I don't actually want more space after that, so I'm going to click cancel. Um, but just know that that is the right way to have this set up. Okay, so you can see that this is a much better way to do that than just like adding a bunch of line spaces. Because if I add a line space, I'm going to have to do that everywhere in order to get that effect. Whereas space before and space after is going to um, do that in a more precise way. And it's going to apply that to all of those instances. Okay, and then space before just works the same as space after, but it just puts the margin above. So let's say I wanted to put some margin in between the price and the description. Okay, I can go to the description paragraph style. And for space before, I can just increase that. And you can see that it's adding some space in there. Okay, cool. All right, so let's cancel that. Um, that spacing looks pretty good. I mean, definitely we're going to clean this up um, more next week. And like I was saying, we, we are going to work more with the styling of this. The goal of this exercise is to just get all of the paragraph styles correct. Okay, so that already looks pretty good. Um, the last thing that we need to do is actually work with these columns because I don't like how this is on one column and then it goes here and then it comes up here. I'd rather have each... Um, heading sort of extend across all three columns. Okay, so we can do that in paragraph styles. And um, let's go over to category. And again, I'm making sure that I don't have that text box selected. Let's go to cat category and down to span columns. Okay, and by default, it's going to be on single column. But if I change that to span columns, okay, and I'm spanning all the columns, but you can also span a specific number. Okay, now it's going to make it so that that style actually spans across all three. Okay, so now you can see that the small plates come kind of comes across and salads comes across and each one of those sort of cuts off the sort of previous item. Okay, so that is working a little bit better. Let's go ahead and click OK. And now we have the small plates sort of in this zone, the salads in this zone and the specialties in this zone. Um, we still need to clean this up just a bit because there's some kind of weird things happening here. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, actually reduce the size of this because we want um, this to kind of break over here. Okay, and then in our salad section, um, we actually have four salads. Okay, so that's a little bit awkward. There's kind of some weird line breaking that's happening, and that's because um, there are four salads and there are three columns. 
So InDesign is sort of trying to make this work, but it doesn't know exactly what to do. And really what we want is um, for these first two solids to be on the first column, the second solid to be on the third column, and the fourth solid to be on the fifth column. Um, if you kind of think about that is a better spacing for the way these solids work. Okay, so what we can do to make that happen is if we go ahead and put our cursor right before this last solid and right click and then go down to insert break character, we can put in what's called a column break. Okay, so that's going to make it so that there's a break of the columns in that area, which is going to bring um, this and, and make it so that the column breaks right before that zone, which is going to line things up how we want. Okay, so that looks a little bit more accurate. Then we're having a similar problem down at the bottom here. And this one we could actually work out just by sort of resizing. Okay, so by resizing that, that has worked that all out and it's gotten the columns to sort of line up. Okay, so now, now these sections look pretty good. We're having a little bit of an issue here where this is breaking to two lines. So maybe what we wanna do is edit the menu item and go down to basic and maybe just shrink this down a little bit, maybe down to 7.5 to get that all to work in one line. Okay, now let's click OK. And then this, again, caused a little bit of an issue after we made that change. So will just bring up that a little bit to sort of control how that flow happens. All right, and then I think we want a little bit more space between our sections. So let me go back to category and just go to indents and spacing, and we'll just go ahead and put a little bit of extra space before. Okay, so in this case, I have some space before and space after that space before is helping get a little bit more separation between those things. All right, and then again, I need to resize this just a little bit because it's creating some issues. And there we go, that looks good. So you can see that this is set up really nicely. Um, we're using columns and paragraph styles to define all these things. So if we need to make any changes to this, it's gonna be really easy to do. And that's what we're gonna do next week. Now that we have this set up, we're going to work to further refine the style of this we're going to work with some more paragraph style features that are a bit more advanced. But for this exercise, I just want you to get all of the paragraph styles sort of dialed into the right sections. And I want you to work in one um, text field. Okay, so it's a good rule of thumb, generally speaking, in InDesign that the less text fields that you're using, the more advanced and the more correct you're, you're sort of creating your InDesign document. So you can imagine that if I created this document by putting a separate text field for each one of these pieces of text, okay, that might be a really intuitive way to work, but it's gonna be a disaster when it comes to changing all the spaces between these objects. Whereas if I really code in all those spaces using the paragraph styles, then I'm gonna be in much better shape because everything is dialed in mathematically, you know, through space before and space after, and all the font styles are sort of coded into those styles, and so I can always go back and change them in a really seamless way. So try to get it to work with just one text field, but generally speaking, the less text boxes that you can create in InDesign, the better that you're doing. Okay, so give this a go, and like I said, don't worry too much about the look of this for now. Um, just get it so that there's a clear hierarchy and that everything is coded in using correct um, paragraph styles and make sure that you're not using any extra line breaks. Okay, so you can see that there's no line breaks in here that are sort of creating space. All the spacing is being coded in through before, um, space before and space after, which is the way that you want it to be.